Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to see about the configuration of the Avilgenix setup. Okay, so without wasting time, let's get started. In the last video, we saw how we can set up the Avilgenix on the server. So in this video, we are going to see how we can configure it. So before starting, here is a quick disclaimer. This video and this course is only for educational and research purpose only. Don't misuse this knowledge. If you are going to misuse this knowledge, then I'll be not responsible for your actions or whatever the counter action which will be taken by the corresponding authorities or government. So check your legal boundaries, stay in your legal boundaries and practice in your control environment. Okay. So if I do ls right here, can you see I have Evigenix ready and the fishlet redirectors folders ready. So if I start the Evigenix, it looks something like this. But there are a lot of missing things. The port 53 is failed to start and the hostname is missing or not the URL is missing. A lot of things are missing. So let's try to configure those things. Let me try to exit right here. And as you can see, the fishlet, oh, sorry, the evilgenix is loading the configuration from slash root slash dot evilgenix folder, right? So I'll just do one thing. I'll just copy this particular path right here and I'll add the command called nano and then I'll paste the path. So nano slash root slash dot evilgenix and slash because the evilgenix is a folder and I will hit the tab button on my keyboard. So it is showing me file called blacklist config data db and cert. So obviously the blacklist file will be the uh, IP address file which contains the IP address which is blacklisted. The database file will be the data dot db cert file will be the certificate information or whatever SSL certificates are there and the config file so we need to edit the config file so i'll add right here config file so the whole command will be nano slash root slash dot evil config dot json so let me hit enter so can you see here backlist mode is set to the unauth that will we will change uh, it later but let's go forward and can you see right here it is asking for the dns port so in the place of the dns port what we can do is hence the port 53 is not available we will say 5300 then there is a domain name so here i will mention the domain name that i am going to use so if you know then i am going to use this opentfcloud.com so let me just copy that domain name and paste it right here uh, once the domain name is configured, then there is an external IPv4 address. So here I will add my server's IPv4 address, that server I'm going to use right now and whatever the server I'm using right now. So if you don't know uh, server address, then what you can do is, uh, first of all, let's save this file and exit. What you can do is you can execute command called curl and then you can say ipconfig.io, okay? And that will show you the IP address of your server. Okay. So let me go back to the nano and let's check. We added the DNS port. We added the domain. We added the IP address. There is no need to change the port because port 50, uh, 443 is a default SSL port. And then there is an unauth URL. So in the place of the unauth URL, you need to remove that YouTube URL, whatever it is, right? And you need to add your own URL. So let me just delete this particular URL and here what I will do, I will add my own domain name right here. Okay. So this is my domain name and then slash why? Because this is the unauth URL I am going to set when I create the URLs. Okay. So this process or this step we are doing in advance. Okay. So let me click on control S that will save the file then control X that will exit from the file now we have configuration ready so let me start dot evilgenix and let me hit enter button right here so right now it is showing everything is working good loading from the fishlet loading configuration ip address is okay so right now it is not showing any error here that port 53 is not allowed or oh, sorry not uh enabled uh then there is a hostname missing then there is IP address missing. These all errors are gone now. Now, here is the thing. We have the fishlet, but the status is disabled. The visibility is disabled and host name is not there, right? So that also needs the configuration. So we are not going to use the fishlet, which is provided by the uh, default uh, evil genetic setup. We are going to create our own fishlet. 
so as of now let's do one thing let's create the copy of the example fish list as it is and later we will edit that particular copy okay so let me hit exit if i do ls it will show me the folder which is uh, the fishlets folder so i will say fishlets ls fishlets so that will list down the all files in the fishlet folder so as you can see we, there is only one file which is example uh, so that's why it is showing the fishlet example only so let's do one thing let's create the copy of this file so to create the copy you have two options either you can directly use command to create copy of this file or you can manually copy all contents of the file and add in the new file okay so i am going to use the command to directly create a copy so i will say cp cp means copy uh, fishlets then example dot yamh to the fishlets and the new copy will be test dot yamh okay or let's say let's say uh, instead of test let's say fluxet okay fluxet dot yamh because uh, fluxet is the website for which we are going to create our own fishlet right so let's hit enter so right now if i do ls and if i do fishlets it will show me two files first file is example then there is a second file which is obviously the flux set okay now here is the thing let me uh, run the evil genix once again and if i run i am getting the example fishlet also and flux set fishlet also remember the content of the two fishlets is same as of now we are going to edit the content but as of now just uh, learn about the configuration how to do configuration now the uh, thing we need to do is obviously we need to enable the fishlet okay so let's try to do fishlets the command we are going to use is fishlets if you don't know the command you can just type the help and it will show you commands right so help so the command is fishlets then we will say enable a uh, flux set okay the flux set and it is saying no i cannot enable because the host name is not set so let's set the host name for the fishlets okay so i'll say fishlets uh, host name then i'll say uh, flux set and then we will mention our host name here so we have a option either we can add up any host name uh, following with the subdomain or we can say set uh, to the like very simplest path and we can add directly domain as a host name so i am going to use the simple path i'll just copy my domain as it is and i will set to the host name right here so once i hit enter it is showing the host name is set great if i execute the commands call fishlet it should show me the host name okay it is saying host name uh, as of now there is a no need to configure an auth url we just need to enable the fishlet so let me go ahead and enable the fishlet the command for that is fishlets enable and the fishlet name which is flux set. okay so now the fishlet is enabled and the host name is also set so right now let's say i want to edit the fishlet or i want to make the changes in the fishlet so then what i need to do i will need to do exit from the here then i will say nano then i will say fishlet and then uh, my fishlet name which is fluxset.yml and here i need to add my configuration right so this process is quite little bit complex and uh, those who are new to linux they will like they will be really frustrated to execute these all commands every single time so that's why we are going to use the shortcut here we don't need to include like uh, open the file using nano every single time what we can do is we can set up all of these on our local computer so that you can make the changes in the local computer and it will be automatically updated in your server okay so let's do that particular setup right here so i'll just keep this server close at it is as it is and i'll minimize this particular window in the new browser window open right here and you can say vs code okay and download this particular vs code or visual studio code okay so once you download the vs code please install i have already installed so i am not going to install once again so let me click on right here in the windows icon and i'll say vs code so it will open my visual studio code okay 
so this is my visual studio code and my version is 1.92 so let me close this one next thing we need to do is we need to go to the plugin section right here in the plugin section we need to search for remote okay and hit enter button or it will automatically search and these are the three plugins that you should be installing first is remote ssh plugin by microsoft by microsoft that's important okay install that particular plugin then there is a remote explorer by microsoft okay install this one also and then there is a remote ssh editing configuration files so that's also by microsoft you need to install those three plugins once you install those three plugins you can close your uh, visual studio code and reopen again so once you reopen you will see this option right here remote explorer on left hand side so you can just click on the remote explorer let me click close on this one uh, okay so these are the host i used in the past for uh, creating the tutorial ignore these particular ip addresses uh, obviously these are not valid ip addresses because i have deleted this server but anyway let's do one thing let's add our own config uh, own uh, server ip address so let's copy this particular ip address go back and here in front of ssh there is a plus button so you can click on that plus button and it will open this particular window you can say right here ssh root at and paste your ip address okay and hit enter button then once again it will say configuration again choose the default configuration which is the first configuration once you do on the right side bottom you will see open config or connect we will click on the connect so it will connect me to the remote server in the new window now it is asking which os you are using on the remote i'll say linux because linux is the os i am using then it will say enter the password so let me enter my server password right here okay and once i enter it will automatically set up the vs code on the server also so that we can edit all files on the server by just simply opening the visual studio code so let me close the this old window because this is the new window that is going to be we are using so let's maximize this window and go to the files so here we will click on the open folder and it will automatically select slash root slash okay and i will hit okay and it will say linux once again and enter the password so let me enter the password right here and it will show me the files on this server obviously i trust this author so can you see we are able to see all files that are present on this server so right now you might say that on your server if i do ls these are the only four files present right but in the visual studio code can you see it is showing hell lot of files that's because it is showing the hidden files also if you want to check the hidden files what you can do is you can say ls and dash all okay and that will show you all hidden files on the server also so can you see the bash rc file is there then cache file is there dot eugenics is there dot local is there and all files are there all of these files can be found here dot cache dot eugenics dot local and all files right so that's the magic of the using visual studio code now when i click on the terminal and open the terminal it will give me terminal access of the server also so that means i don't need to use this particular cmd anymore i can just close it and i can execute all of the bash command right here so if i do ls can you see i am getting exactly same output if i so dot slash evil genix i can run evil genix from here also right so yeah that's the magic of using the visual studio code okay so as of now whatever the raid uh, error you are getting right here just ignore that error i'll explain it later okay and now so you have the visual studio set up right here so here let me close the uh, welcome window right here and uh, if you remember we are storing all our fishlet in the fishlet folder this folder and fluxet is the new fishlet that we created so let me click on the fluxet so now i can just edit the fluxet right here and it will update automatically on the server let me show you one example so let me make this uh, particular window bigger and let me clear this screen so let's say here i want to 
uh, instead of the academy i'll replace this with the xx double x okay and i'll save this particular file and let's see if the file is updated on the server or not we will say nano fishlets and fluxet okay and can you see on the server also it is showing the xsx right here that means the file is updated so this is the easiest way you can use to quickly edit your fishlet on the server okay so yeah that's all about the important configuration changes that we need to do in the evil genx right so in the next video we will see how we can create our own basic fishlet right so yeah thanks for watching this one and see you in the next